All right. So in this example, ladies and gentlemen, if you guys remember, I did um, explain again for this problem. Now, this is a very great problem because a lot of students, when we're doing the composition, they quickly fall into the trap of saying, oh, cosine inverse of cosine, well, that should just undo each other, right? 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 And that's usually the case. Because a lot of times when we were like solving, I, you know, remember I said, hey, if you had like cosine of an angle, or like if I did this, like cosine of theta equaled, you know, you know, one half. What we're doing is taking cosine inverse of both sides. So theta equals cosine inverse of one half, right? But in this composition, though, we have to be very careful to follow the order of operations and not just cancel them out and say, oh, they undo each other. We need to follow the order of operations because there's something that's very important that we need to follow, which is the restrictions. Okay? So if we apply cosine of 7 pi over 4 first, first of all, we need to know where the heck does 7 pi you know, over 4 even relate. So going back to that little focus lesson that we practiced, right? if I have four friends right, and I have a candy bar, I want to cut it up into four little parts, correct? So if a whole pi is 4, but I'm talking about with my four friends, I'm going to break that up into 4. I'll still have four parts of my 4, right? But I have 7 pi over 4. So therefore, I'm going to break this one up into fourths, right? Because it's 7 pi over 4 is more than 4 fourths, correct? So 1 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi, 5 pi, 6 pi, 7 pi over 4. That's actually the same problem as your quiz, which we'll go over here after this. So if I have 7 pi over 4, how far do I need to get over here? Pi over 4. So we call that the reference angle. What's nice about the reference angle is the reference angle is much easier to remember. If you can always quickly find the reference angle, you can quickly find what the value is. So if we look over there and we say, oh, OK. What is the cosine of pi over 4? So we find the little right triangle that corresponds to the pi over 4, or 45 degrees. And we know that the cosine, we could easily do, for cosine, we could do adjacent over hypotenuse. Or since we're looking at the point on the unit circle, we could just use the x coordinate. So the cosine of pi over 4 is square over 2 over 2. Um, <clears throat> so therefore, I now have the cosine inverse of square root of 2 over 2. However, in this quadrant, though, is cosine positive or negative where this, so here's this point down here. Is this, so here's, here's the reference angle, right? Square root of 2 over 2, comma, square root of 2 over 2. Well, this point is going to be, what's going to be negative? The sine, right? The, oh, I'm sorry, the y coordinate. Why'd you write I don't know. But does everybody see how that one's negative? Right? Only the y is negative. So cosine's still positive. So my angle now is cosine of square root of 2 over 2. All right, so now I need to figure out what angle produces the positive value of square root of 2 over 2. Well, there are um, two angles. This produces the angle pi over 4. Pi over 4 produces um, square root of 2 over 2. And also, doesn't 7 pi over 4, this, the original angle, the 7 pi over 4, if you took the cosine of 7 pi over 4, isn't that also square root of 2 over 2? Would you guys agree with me? So we have two answers. How do we know which one is correct? Because both of them produce square root of 2 over 2. For instance, cosine of pi over 4 is square root of 2 over 2. Cosine of 7 pi over 4 is also square root of 2 over 2. So when I'm trying to say cosine inverse, I'm saying what angle produces the cosine of square root of 2 over 2? There's two options, but only one of them is correct. Yes, what do you think? You don't know. Yes, logo. Reference angle. Why? Well, not, I, didn't, I didn't really mean always use the reference angle for that reason because it's positive. What I, I always liked using the reference angle because it's much easier to remember kind of like the points of the first quadrant. So if you can always remember what the reference angle is and then just evaluate for where it is in the quadrant. So if you know the reference angle, you know, oh, it's square root of 2 over 2. Oh, it's in the fourth quadrant. That means that's negative. But there's, a re there's an angle. There's one reason why the angle. And there's something that I spent 20 minutes explaining something about 
Because it's between 0 and pi. 0 and pi. Because remember, I wrote down, you only have the inverse. Uh, sine inverse is only a function when you restrict the domain of cosine between 0 and pi. Do you guys see how this angle is between 0 and pi, where this angle goes outside 0 and pi? Yes? So therefore, your final answer is not, oh, they cancel out 7 pi over 4. No, the answer is pi over 4. Okay. So just from these problems, again, as I mentioned, do the innermost problem first, then do the next problem. Okay. Yes? Pi? Yeah, pi. Is that always circumstantial to this being over that? Cosine. Yeah. I'm not really sure what your question was asking. Okay. You found the last, last answer because this angle, the one that you have right now. The red one. Right. Is between 0 and pi. Right. The black one. But the actual black one, yeah. Which is 7 pi over 4, even though it produces the same x value, which would be cosine. Do you guys see how they have the same x value? Right? He's asking if it's circumstantial. Yeah. What do you mean circumstantial? Like, like to? They can have a lot of problems where the black line is going to be more than the actual um, the degree Yeah, there's get, usually a lot of times that's then that's the whole point of the restrictions. Usually on the restrictions, if you guys look at like if you guys look at the unit circle, usually you're going to have two answers. You're going to have cosine could be two answers. It could be two angles. Sine could be two angles. Tangent could be two angles. So you can only choose the angle that falls within the restriction. So yes, it is, it is always going to be based on what the restriction is. So you need to memorize the restrictions. You need to know the restrictions, absolutely. Because in the same respect, what if I, 